end of February in a new edition of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus explaining what's going on in nations around the world. First today, we're going to the Middle East for an update from the war-torn country of Yemen. It's located between Saudi Arabia and the Gulf of Aden. Its location's important because Yemen also borders one of the world's most used shipping lanes where the Red Sea meets the Gulf of Aden. And its ongoing civil war, which flared up in 2011, could have an impact on international shipping. 99% of Yemen's 28 million people are Muslim, but there are religious divisions among them. Most Yemenis are Sunni Muslim, but just over a third are Shiite Muslim. And for years, a Shiite militant group called the Houthis has been rebelling against the Yemeni government. International officials believe the Houthis are supported by Iran, a predominantly Shiite Muslim country. The Yemeni government forces are supported by Saudi Arabia, a predominantly Sunni Muslim country. So religious tensions in the region outside Yemen factor in too. The situation, especially for many civilians, is desperate, but there's no end in sight. Yemen is in the midst of a civil war. Iranian-backed Houthi rebels unseated the internationally recognized government of President Abdul Rabo Hadi in 2015. The Houthi rebels initially took control of the capital Sana and much of the rest of the country. Saudi Arabia, through airstrikes, leads a coalition, including the UAE, Bahrain, Egypt and Sudan, supporting the government's ground offensives, who now claim they hold 85% of the country's territory. However, Houthi rebels still control the capital Sana and the strategic Red Sea port of Hudaydah. A UN report says neither side is doing enough to prevent civilian suffering. More than 13,000 civilian casualties are reported so far, with nearly one-third Yemen's population close to starvation and one million at risk of cholera. The value of the Yemeni real is suffering, fuel is in short supply and food is getting more expensive. The UN report also accuses Iran of failing to stop direct or indirect supply of Iranian-made ballistic missiles to the Houthi rebels, who fire them at Saudi cities, including the capital, Riyadh. Houthi rebels are threatening international shipping in the Red Sea, warning they'll close the waterway through which one-tenth of the world's maritime trade passes. The conflict is complex. Yemen has always been poor and has long relied on aid from its prosperous northern neighbor, Saudi Arabia. Hadi's government is battling not just Houthi rebels, but Al-Qaeda and ISIS with American military help and faces a separate, strong separatist movement in the south. For now, the government plans to continue its military offensive to pressure the Houthis to talks. The war is far from over. Investigators are trying to figure out what led to an accident yesterday that involved a large garbage truck and a train carrying dozens of members of the U.S. Congress. Almost 100 Republicans, including Senators, Representatives, and House Speaker Paul Ryan, were headed to a retreat in West Virginia when the train they were traveling on collided with a tractor trailer. The driver of the truck was killed. Six other people, including two Amtrak crew members, were hospitalized. Except for some minor injuries, all the members of Congress were reportedly okay. Several of them thanked the first responders and asked people to pray for the victims of the accident and their families. And because some of the lawmakers are doctors or have medical training, they were able to help those who were hurt. U.S. President Donald Trump said the Republican lawmakers conference would go on as planned. The director of the CDC, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, resigned from her job on Wednesday. Dr. Brenda Fitzgerald, an obstetrician gynecologist from Georgia, had served as head of the CDC since she was appointed last July. But about a month after that, she reportedly bought stock in a number of companies that included Japan Tobacco, one of the largest tobacco businesses in the world. That's according to a report that came out earlier this week from Politico, a political news organization. Tobacco smoking is the leading cause of preventable death in the U.S. And Dr. Fitzgerald has spoken out against it and offered the government's help in getting people to quit. So critics say her stock holding in a tobacco company was a conflict of interest. A spokesman for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, which oversees the CDC, says the stock purchase wasn't made directly by Dr. Fitzgerald, that her financial account manager did it. And another former director of the CDC says he believes that Fitzgerald didn't know that her financial manager had made the investment in Japan Tobacco. 
and that when she found out, she said to sell the stock. Another doctor has been brought in to head up the CDC until Fitzgerald's replacement is named. Second trivia. What country has the highest number of different languages spoken? China, Nigeria, Papua New Guinea, or Trinidad and Tobago? More than 820 languages are believed to be spoken in the Pacific Island nation of Papua New Guinea. The CIA World Factbook says that's about 12% of all the languages on Earth and they're spoken in a country that's just a bit bigger than the U.S. state of California. There are three official languages in Papua New Guinea that are widely spoken. That helps with communication since many of the other languages are understood by less than a thousand people. It would be a great place for a hyper-polyglot to practice. What do you get when you cross a celebrity portrait with dessert? A pie trick! No, I didn't make that up. It came from a baker and artist and punster who goes by the pious on Instagram. Besides baking up puns, she does this, putting people like Oprah Winfrey, Betty White, and Thor in pie form. And if you want another dimension to your dessert, 3D delicacies like the Kraken could be considered both edible and artistic. Of course, to enjoy them, you have to deface them. And some celebrities might be crusty about the idea. A bad pie trick could hurt their fillings. But others would go nutmeg for it. Having your day all spiced up with your face pastried in good taste? How do you like them apples, y'all? I'm Carl Azus, and that's CNN 10.